Hi, my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today I'm doing a really quick video just talking about valves. So someone asked me about valves um, a couple of weeks ago, about their design and so on and so forth. So I just thought I'd take this opportunity <coughs> excuse me, to talk about valves. So this is officially known as a poppet valve and it basically has two parts to it. It has the valve head, which is the big trumpety bottom bit and then it has the valve stem. Now the valve itself is has two sections, you know, the valve head and the valve stem. But weirdly enough it actually has two parts. So when these are manufa manufactured, um, this head is uh, machined into a basic profile or forged into a basic profile. Then it is hardened and then it is ground. So this surface here is ground onto the valve. Some have dimples, some don't, depending on the combustion chamber design and what the designers decided or wanted from the valve. Then you have the valve stem, which has a relief at the top um, for a collet or some kind of locking device. Some engines are different. Then you have the valve tip, which is obviously where either the tap it from a uh, rocker will uh, strike or the tap it itself, a bucket tap it that sits on top, usually for overhead camshaft designs. So the critical parts of this valve is obviously the valve um, mating surface here that uh, actually makes contact with the seat to make a nice clean contact and to make a nice seal and the actual diameter of the stem here um, which runs in the valve guards. Now some engines um, especially the old American V8 muscle cars some of them had direct in block valves so basically it's a hole drilled and reamed inside the actual uh, cast iron head and the valves run in that or generally nowadays we either have brass or bronze um, or uh, another type of steel that is used as valve guides so basically it's just like a bearing it's a wearable uh, it's a you know a wearable um, component that can be replaced if it becomes sloppy and it leaks oil and so on and so forth so the way poppet valves work is that pressure is applied to the top and it moves the valve down and then this uh, opens the port and then air can flow in or exhaust gases can flow back out again. Um, what they do is they manufacture this and then uh, the, the bottom and the top, the stem, they manufacture them in two separate pieces. The stem itself is actually usually a, a harder, um, tougher steel and then they basically spin them and then they friction weld them together. You can see there's a ridge here, you can usually feel it uh, with your finger, um, but you can see this one quite pronounced. Um, basically they push them together and they weld themselves together. Um, so you can make the two surfaces different because the valve head has to be quite tough and not as hard, where the stem has to be hard wearing and impact resistance for the camshaft obviously, or the um, tap it's constantly smacking on the end of the valve. Uh, failures usually occur obviously at the thinnest section here, uh, sometimes the valves can break at this point and then it will drop the valve into the head and it's just a, not a good day out. Um, as you can see this is from the CX500, this has got a single cut on the valve and I've got a few other valves to show you. I've done a couple of videos with the Subaru valve so I won't include them. They have a uh, three cut valve surface on and I've done a video that's here, you can see that um, about three cut valves and five cut and etc. Any road, so we've got that one. Um, the other valve that I have that is interesting is this one. As you can see, it's a lot bigger valve, but you can see that there's an awful, there's a, an awful, there's a big difference, an awfully big difference between the two. Um, this has a mushroom radius top, a very wide tip. It also has this collar here, and as you can see, it's a single cut valve, and you can see that it's pretty much. Um, the same thing, but this is very old, this is actually a 19, as far as I've been able to find out, this is a 1921 valve from a Ford, and it has Ford engraved by hand into the bottom of the valve, and then stamped, and A is stamped in the bottom, so this is from a Ford, very very old valve, I keep this, and I keep this in the condition it came out of the engine, because, I don't know, I just like the, um, aesthetics of having it old. I could polish this up but I kind of not tend to want to. So this is, like I say, this is how much valves have uh, changed. There was a collet that grabbed this valve because that they uh, used a different spring arrangement and it wasn't as good. Now this steel is, as far as I can tell, 
um, the same all the way through. So this is just a machine valve. You can actually see uh, some of the grinding features on the actual valve itself. And it looks like the, pretty much the whole thing was ground. Um, it could be... I was thinking, could it be a two-piece? Because you can see a ring on the inside. Maybe this was two-piece. Like I say, I haven't cleaned this up. Maybe I should actually clean this up and see if this valve was a two-piece, the head, and this stem was pressed in, a press fit. Um, but that's that. That's a really old valve, so you can see how much they've changed. Um, obviously, there's a size difference, but you can see how little characteristics of how the valves have changed, the construction of this one, the construction of this one, and how they are retained. The other... Um, valve I have is this big bad boy so this is out of a drag engine this is something I've had for quite a while now and you can pl plainly see here the difference between the two materials on the valve um, but again this is just a massive version of the newer valve well, I say newer this is the newest valve uh, it has three cuts you can plainly see on this one it has three cuts on this valve it has a flat flat bottom due to the uh, combustion chamber arrangement, it doesn't need a dimple or anything like that, but you can see the relationship between how wide this stem is and how wide the head is, this is quite pretty hefty actually um, again it has a secondary ring that's actually uh, for a clip to go in and then it has the same collet arrangement, but again you can see between the two different ones is that they have different uh, reliefs for the collet and you can also see that there's a clamping area on there, that's the way that the collet actually makes contact and locks in there, it uses that for stability. So I just thought I wanted to show you something that's from the 70s, something that's from the 1920s that's completely different, and something that is used for a completely different application. I, this is trying to go as fast as possible, this was just trying to work, and this was for mass production. So you can see the difference between all three of them, but it's quite interesting to see that this valve has the three cuts because when you do drag racing three cuts will really make a difference versus the one cut and um, because you're pushing the engine to the extreme the collet arrangement is different where they actually clamp onto the valve uh, versus this one and you can see that the old-fashioned one is literally com a completely different animal anyway I hope you found that interesting um, I have got some other dragster components and stuff we might look at one day if there's enough interest and stuff um, pistons and what have you and conrods and such um, so yeah that's the three different valves and I'll see you in a bit